Hello, my name is James Berry and I'm a professional helicopter pilot working in the UK. And if this is your first time watching my videos, I'm making a series on the seven steps to become a professional pilot. Today we'll be talking about step six, which is the CPLH course. In this video, we'll dive into what the course is, what to expect, how to prepare yourself for it, and somewhat most importantly, how much it's going to cost you in both time and money. So the CPLH course, it's a 35 hour full time training program aimed at advancing your abilities and adding the professional gleam to them. At the end of it, post examination, it will grant you a commercial pilot's license. Simply put, this allows you to be paid for your work as a pilot, something that was never available to you as a private pilot. And it's quite amazing, to be honest. Um, the course content itself is not too dissimilar from the private pilot's license course. However, there's the full-time element and the mindset and tolerances. You must think like a commercial pilot and you must do the same manoeuvres, but to much stricter tolerances. This involves some uh, developments on those uh, manoeuvres, like a fall down, auto rotation, fully to the ground, skids touching. Unlike the PPLH course, which can be taken as your leisure, the commercial pilot's licence is full time. It should take between three and six weeks. You can do it as low as three days a week, but that does significantly extend the training period. The biggest change and steepest learning curve comes from the shift in mindset, how you think about flying. Unless you've had a strict instructor that's taught you like a commercial pilot from day one, this can be a little bit of a shock to the system. So although I've said flying is no longer an activity for your pleasure, that doesn't mean it isn't fun. You'll get to fly as a professional pilot in a myriad of different places, under different circumstances, in different aircraft, doing many, many different things. There isn't much a helicopter can't do. So with this certification, the sky really is the limit, pun intended. Your attitude must change though, and that is the difficult part, the part that I struggle with, the part that most people struggle with. Otherwise the course basically just focuses on improving your abilities from your PPLH and your hour building. You'll find your weak areas and you will drill down into them, and this is enjoyable, but tough. It takes the form of lots of emergency procedures, navigating to strict height, heading, speed, and time limits downwind quick stops, professionalism and efficiency. Now, just to recap what I mentioned in the last video, the prerequisites for the CPLH course, and I'll put them on the screen just down here again. The minimum age of 18, holding a private pilot's license, 155 hours total flight time, and 50 hours pilot in command, of which 10 are cross country. You must have also completed your ATPLH or CPLH theoretical exams within 36 months, and pay attention to this, of the likely date of you finishing your CPLH course, examination and application and hold a class one medical. That means everything needs to be finished before that 36 months is up. It is, of course, a lot of flying over a short period of time. You'll see your abilities grow significantly, but it is very important to ensure that you have complete funding before you begin this endeavour, or well, that can create a lot of problems. The total course length is 35 hours, which is usually divided into 10 hours general handling, 10 hours now navigation, and 10 hours simulated instrument flight, and then a five hour bolt on for your night flying rating, which in itself is a very enjoyable part of the process. Due to the nature of the day and night cycle in the UK, we know that uh, night time or legal night, the time at which that starts varies hugely throughout the year with it being very, very early in the winter and very, very late in the summer. So in terms of logistics, it would be better for you to try and conduct your CPLH course in the darker side of the year, if you're having that night part with it, where sunset is 6 p.m. or earlier. However, do not delay starting your CPLH course if you're ready to 
make it that part of the year. I ended up doing mine in peak summer, which was enjoyable, but it necessitated going and flying uh, somewhere else at a very quiet airfield during very unsociable hours, but I had a lot of fun with it. 35 hours is just the minimum. As with all of these things, I took more hours to do my CPLH course especially where the new hours come in is because of waiting for an exam. Sometimes there'll be a period where you're waiting to be assigned an examiner and take your exam and you want to keep those abilities right up to scratch, up to the day. Some people also take the opportunity to do an additional type writing as part of their commercial pilot's license. I would avoid this. The course is hard enough as it is and you must have confidence with your helicopter before you go into this course. So don't take the opportunity to fly a new type with this course. Type ratings are for our building sections and post all licenses when someone else is paying for them. So now I'm just going to run through some elements to help you prepare yourself for this course. I might have mentioned it before in the ATPLH video, but save some of your hour building, 10 to 20 hours, and spend some of this time with an instructor to fly intensely before your course to practice some of your weak areas. We can all fall into the habit of flying with Sky Demon and Runway HD once we've got our pilot, private pilot's license, but take some time to go back to the traditional methods and make sure you still understand them because you will be required to fly with those methods during the CPLH course and for the exam. Practice your emergency procedures with an instructor and when you're not with an instructor, practice reading them. Read through section three of your pilot's operating handbook and know them by heart for your aircraft. Your RT must be to a good standard. Familiarize yourself with the applicable elements of CAP 413. It's the legal document for the UK that covers radio telephony. Know your A-check components. If you don't or you're not confident with the A-check of the aircraft, Hire an instructor for an hour or two of ground school to go through a thorough A-check with you. The mated brief that begins each flight needs to be to a very good standard for the commercial pilot's course. I may make a video on this if you request it, but go through it with an instructor if you want some help with that. Have a slick startup of your aircraft. You are preparing to be a commercial pilot, so you cannot spend 10 minutes on the ground in an R22 because you're unfamiliar with the startup sequence. Similarly, you must be able to streamline the flight planning process. On test day, you will have one hour to be ready to fly. However, there are many elements of pre-flight that can be done ahead of receiving that key information required to plan the navigation element. Look the part. It sounds silly, but it really helps. Get yourself a pilot shirt, black trousers, belt, and a tie. You can get all these on Transair or somewhere like that. Come in early, have everything ready to make the most of the day. Ensure the aircraft is fueled and checked for the first flight and that your mate brief is done and on the board. Lastly, be proactive. Try to find problems before they're pointed out and then attack them and solve them. This is a key feature of being a pilot, is proactivity. During the course, there can and most likely will come a time where it seems like you will not be able to meet the standards required. It happened to me, and if the school is good, they push you much further past what is required to pass the exam, but it can feel like a brick wall to get through. About this, I have no other advice than everyone. Most people have felt like this at some point. And most of those people who will tell you this are on the other side, are professional pilots now. So you can get through that, even though it may feel like an obstacle at the time. So we've talked about how to prepare for the course. And to be honest, your instructor will look after you during your course. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some tips to pass the exam now, okay? So there is a document called the UK CAA Standards Document 03H. Don't worry, I'm going to put a link for that and I'll probably write it over here. 
This will detail the technical aspects of the test and outline specific tolerances to be met if you'd like to review these. However, remember that you do not need to be perfect. You just need to be confident and you need to be safe. The examiner will sit there and decide whether you as an individual will be able to take anybody flying. The common thought process for them as a member of their family under commercial pressure and return safe and sound. If you can tick this box, then you are fit to learn more. It is a license to learn. It's the beginning of your journey. The exam starts with a briefing and some technical knowledge, followed by a long flight with navigation emergencies, upper and lower general ground, general handling and instrument flight sections. You can pass all sections for a full pass. You can fail one section for a partial pass, or if you fail more than one section, it is a full fail and you need to retake the entire exam again. If you have a partial pass, you need only retake that section that you failed. Where should you do your commercial pilot's license course? Where should you actually do it? Well, I can recommend where I did mine because I thought that they were brilliant. Um, I went to helicopter services in White Waltham, which is west of Heathrow. Um, it's a place of utmost quality, highly respected pilots, and they're active commercial pilots who go on jobs. They'll be teaching you and you'll have the chance to witness firsthand what the jobs are actually like on occasion. The place is a hub and it's connected to all corners of the rotary market. It's an excellent place to meet people as well. I undertook my night rating, however, with Arcus Helicopters in Nottingham and I found that their approach, personalisation of learning and instructors were of the highest quality. Couldn't recommend them enough. So lastly, how much does it cost in both time and money? As stated before, the course should take roughly four weeks when undertaken full time. And as of February 2024, I did some research and found that for an R22, expect roughly £17,500. And for an R44, expect roughly £27,000. I imagine the G2 would fit somewhere into the middle of these two. These figures are inclusive of VAT and all airport fees, etc. They encompass most of the costs that I can imagine that the course would cost you, you know, not standing any uh, accommodation or anything like that. The remaining cost is for test day and with a hefty CAA examiner fees, aircraft rental and application fees, the day itself can cost you somewhere between £1,500 and £2,000. I know it's a bitter pill to swallow, especially if you do not get a pass first time. What is next after this? Well, congratulations. You have earned your bars. Now it's time for where you must decide what you would like to do next. And join me to discuss that very point in the final step, step seven. Thank you for joining me in this video. Please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me generate the content. And you can also contact me on Facebook, Instagram or Superprof via which I offer theoretical lessons. Goodbye. I'll see you next time.